This video is sponsored by Lecturio. Oh, dude, that's so cool. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And today I'm joined by my friends, Declan, Alex, and my girlfriend, Deb. And we're doing another quiz. This time we're doing a medical quiz. And Deb's prepared a bunch of different questions from different body systems. And she's gonna ask us the questions. We're gonna try to get as many as we can correct. So the loser of today's quiz will have an ice bucket thrown on top of them, which in the current 35 degree weather isn't too bad. But Deb, let's go on to the first section. Question one. What does the hot sound S2 correspond with? Seth. It corresponds to um, aortic and pulmonary valve closing. Correct. Question two. Which transporter or channel is targeted by digoxin? The reanidine receptor? Channel? Mm -hmm. Calcium. Alex? The l type calcium channel? Incorrect. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually. Yes. Okay, so the doxin was formerly known as foxglove, and the mechanism of action of digoxin is that it inhibits chloride channels. Mm. Oh, sodium. Oh, sodium. Sodium. So digoxin sodium. Sodium, sodium. inhibits okay. the sodium-potassium yeah. yeah. ATPase. Oh. Okay, that was pretty poor. Question yeah. three. What three conditions make up acute coronary syndrome? <laughs> so um, acute coronary syndrome, you can have um, one of the conditions is atherosclerosis. Yeah, no. Michael, what do you think? What am I thinking of? Like unstable angina. Yep. And st oh. stable angina. Incorrect. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I don't actually. I don't actually. Are you five more seconds? Unstable angina. <laughs> yeah. Coronary artery occlusion. Incorrect. Yeah. Okay, you guys are all wrong. Acute coronary syndrome is three manifestations, including unstable angina, end stemmies, and a STEMI. Oh, okay. So just two different types of MIs. Damn. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. Which endothelial layers are separated in an aortic dissection? Declan? The intima and the media. Correct. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. All right, next question. On an ECG, between which duration should a normal PR interval be? Um, 120 to 200 milliseconds. Correct. Nice. <laughs> what is the effect of a positive dromotropic agent? What? Okay. It's um, increasing the contractility of the heart. Incorrect. Mm. Could you oh, drone, drone, drone. It, yeah. it Alex... decrease the contractility <laughs> of the heart? <laughs> no, no, no. Increases heart rate. No, that's chronotropic. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Dromotropy specifically refers to the conduction rate through the AV oh, node. Oh, yes. Yeah, no. So yeah, a positive speed. dromotropic agent will decrease the PR interval. Next question. Which valvular disorder is characterized by a crescendo, decrescendo murmur? Aortic stenosis. Correct. Nice. Okay. Dual antiplatelet therapy is used in the management of myocardial infarction. Identify two drugs involved in this therapy. Oh, I Declan. went sorry. No, go, go, go. Okay. go, go. Uh, clopidogrel and aspirin. Correct. Yeah. Where in the nephron does furosemide act? <laughs> the thick ascending loop of Henle. Yep, correct. Yeah. <laughs> Is hematuria more commonly seen in nephritic or nephrotic syndrome? Declan? Nephritic. Correct. Yep. Right, I must answer the wrong one there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be getting it right. What is the mechanism of action of spironolactone? Declan. Um, <laughs> spironolactone is, um, oh, it's a, a uh, adrenal. Four. Um, three. Two. No, I don't know. One. No. Isn't it an aldosterone antagonist? Yeah. Correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Adrenal. Yeah. Next question. Which part of the nephron is responsible for the majority absorption of sodium? Declan. Uh, the, like, the most proximal part. Which is known as the? The proximal Two, one. loop. Two. Out. Proximal Alex. convoluted tube. Oh, Correct. Dude. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> what was that? You had it. You had it. I know it's the most proximal. I don't need to know what it's called. I yes. just need to know no, what it's called. Yeah. 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 The proximal part. So Rolling the next good. question is a multiple choice question. Wait till all options have been listed out before answering. How many options are there? Just so we know when four. you're- it's, okay, it, Four. It's extended matching A through K. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following directly activates the renin angiotensin system? High sodium, low blood pressure, low potassium, or high glucose? Low blood pressure. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Identify one cause of pre-renal AKI. <laughs> 
nice. Hypovolemia. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Dang that was it, quick. Dude. That was so quick. Next question. A 48-year-old female patient presents with frequent muscle cramps and paresthesia around her mouth. When taking a blood pressure reading, she involuntarily flexes her wrists and fingers. Which of the following changes are most likely? Hypercalcemia, hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia, or hypokalemia? Is that hypercalcemia. Incorrect. Oh, it's yeah. hyperkalemia. Incorrect. No. What well, were the other no, two options? It's, it's, it's hyper. <laughs> Hypocalcemia. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rush it. Rush it. I, so, so, yeah, rush it. Muscle cramps and involuntary carpopedal spasm upon blood pressure reading are known as the Trousseau sign. Trousseau so, sign. Predictive okay. of hypocalcemia. Old mate Trousseau. Next question. <laughs> the triple whammy is a combination of three drugs which should be avoided as they can impair renal function and result in renal failure. Which drugs make up the triple whammy? Yes. ACE inhibitors? Yeah. NSAIDs? Yeah. yeah. And um, oh, diuretics. Correct! Yeah. 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 Nice. That was really good. That was good. I forgot about that until I looked it up. Easy question to start off with. Which lung consists of three lobes? <laughs> Seb. Right. Correct. No, who had the high pitched one? Seb. Oh, it's Seb. Did. Okay, I heard the high pitched one. Yeah. I don't know if it's high pitched or oh. because it was first. You know what? Let's just go. All three of us oh, get yeah, the yeah, point. Yeah. Okay, fine. Ding, ding, ding. All three of us get the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All three of you get the point. Let's go. <laughs> I was going to say, let's go. Away. <laughs> Next question. What is the gram stain of Streptococcus pneumoniae? Gram positive. What type of shape? Oh, gram positive copper. More specific. <laughs> gram positive diplococcus. Correct. Right. Yes. Uh, Damn. Uh, that is going to get wrong. No, that's. Cystic fibrosis is caused by mutation in the CFTR gene. Which mutation is most common? <laughs> Alex. F508 Delta. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Were you actually before me? Infectious mononucleosis is caused by which pathogen? <laughs> Alex. TB. Correct. Mm. Never heard of it. It's a good guess. <laughs> oh, this is a just go, you just go. Okay. You just go. Streptococcus monogenes. Huh? Incorrect. Mm. Um, no, Haemophilus no. influenza. Incorrect. No. It's Epstein's bar virus. It causes glandular yeah. fever. I knew it causes gland. Oh, I knew it was glands, so but I, I was like, I only know mm. it's mononucleosis. I thought, I thought monocytes TB. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Which antibody is most elevated in a patient with asthma? <laughs> um. IgE. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say like. <laughs> I'm just not as quick as you guys. Next question. Yeah. What is the primary cause of mesothelioma? <laughs> Asbestosis. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Listen carefully. A 35 year old woman presents with a three day history of cough, productive with a small amount of phlegm. What sign should make you suspect this is pneumonia rather than bronchitis? Cause crepitation on auscultation, apyrexia, pulse rate of 96 beats per minute, or purulent phlegm. <laughs> Alex. Option A. Correct. Yeah. Nice. Next question is another multi choice. Which of the following is responsible for pursed lip breathing in patients with severe emphysema? <laughs> to prevent cyanosis, to prevent dynamic airway obstruction, to decrease the residual volume, to increase lung volume, or to increase the pig expiratory flow? <laughs> Alex. B. Correct. Yeah. I knew that as well. Smash I don't know. What you <laughs> no, no, it's because it. for multi choice, I always wait for all the options. All right, guys, before we move on to the next section, the last two questions were actually written by the team at Lecturio, who's kindly sponsoring today's video. So, if you guys have never heard about Lecturio, it's an online learning platform designed to help you learn medicine. It's packed full of features, including a comprehensive video library, space repetition, quiz questions, and a very big Q bank with detailed explanations. Its content is divided into different body systems and also also into different basic sciences. It even has resources specifically designed for students preparing for tests like the USMLE or the NEET. I primarily access Lecturio from my computer, but you can also access Lecturio on your phone or on your tablet because they have a great mobile application which makes doing things on the run really easy. I want to show you how I've been using Lecturio in medical school. So when you load up Lecturio for the first time, you'll be on the home page. So when you go into the video library, you can first of all divide it into different categories. But because I've now started year three, I'm in my clinical years, I'm gonna click on clinical generic. I'm currently on my internal medicine rotation. So let's go into internal medicine. And so if I'm doing a gastroenterology term, we can see here that there's 14 hours of lectures that I can review. And what's cool about it is that I can add this to my study planner 
and say I wanted to finish all these lectures in a week and I want to study every day, it's estimated that I'll need to study about three hours per day in order to finish all these videos. And so say I wanted to review pulmonary vascular disease and I'm feeling pretty unfamiliar with pulmonary emboli so I'm gonna go over some PE. It's a little short four minute video but it's broken up into all these different categories. What's good about the videos is that the lecturers are world-class physicians, doctors, researchers and the information that you're given are extremely high yield. And so once you've finished a video, it offers you different quiz questions. And so having a look at one of the questions, it says which of the following may cause a pulmonary fat embolism? And I'm thinking that it's probably a fracture of the long bones so when you select your option you can say how confident you feel about it so you can say you're not confident you're kind of semi-confident or you're really happy with it I'll click this and I selected it and it's correct so having a look at another question and say I didn't know what the risk factors for pulmonary embolism was and so I'm not really sure what the answer is and let's just put long flights so I'll select it here and what it says it is that it's incorrect and I need to retake it. So once you finish that, you can then go into your space repetition bank and review any due questions. Depending on your answer confidence and your correctness on previous quiz attempts, the questions will be played back again and this is a great way to help strengthen your knowledge acquisition. And if that wasn't enough to test you, Lecturer also has a really comprehensive question bank. So a 63 year old man presents the clinic with fever accompanied by shortness of breath. And the question asks, according to this patient's history, which of the following should be the next step in the management of this patient? So with any patient that comes in, I think the first thing that you got to do is do a chest x-ray and clicking through, yes it is. What I like about it is you can go to the learning objective at the bottom and it tells you what you have to take away from this question. And if you want to learn more about COPD, it gives you a related video so that you can touch up on whatever you're weak in. So if you want to give it a go for yourself, then be sure to check out my link in the description below and use the coupon code SEBASTIANPIRI35 to get 35% off three and 12 month memberships. Okay, now back to the quiz. Next question. Okay. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia most commonly results from a deficiency in what enzyme? 21 alpha hydroxylase. Incorrect. Are you sure? Can you actually yeah. fact check? 21 beta hydroxylase. Correct. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> how dare you question me? Which two types of HPV are responsible? Mm -hmm. It's 50 50. 50 50. I should have waited. I'm yeah. um, 6 and 11. Incorrect. No! 16 and 18. Correct. Yeah. So, so if you don't know, HPV 6 and 11 are responsible for forming genital warts. 16 and 18 yeah. are the oncogenic ones responsible for cervical cancer. So the rest of the question was, what two types of HPV are responsible for the majority of cervical cancers? So, yeah. You should have waited. Next question. What is the mechanism of action of methimazole? Inhibits TPO. Correct. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've never heard it. In an obstetrics history, what does gravita 2 para 1 mean? Or mm. Alex? Two pregnancies, one birth. Correct. Yeah. Oi. Yeah. That was good. I, didn't, yeah, I had no, no idea. That, I didn't know that. Really? Specifically, one birth of a fetus with gestational age greater than 24 weeks, regardless of whether it's alive or born. Still. Right, yeah. Next question. In Graves' disease, IgG antibodies against which receptor are produced? TSH. Correct. Nice. A 42 year old man is prescribed a DPP4 inhibitor to improve his control of type 2 diabetes. What is the mechanism of action of this medication? Seth. The mechanism of action of a DPP4 inhibitor is to inhibit DPP4, which results in a decreased breakdown of GLP1. Yeah. Yep. Which of the following is not caused by cortisol as part of a stress response? Lipolysis, hypoglycemia, anti-inflammatory effects, proteolysis. Yeah. Yeah. Hypoglycemia. Incorrect. I'm sorry, correct, correct, correct. Oh, yeah. correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh Alex and Declan are time. I should have buzzed in. Hey, gang. Yeah, nice. Ten gang. All right, we're done, right? Next question. What is the most aggressive brain tumor? Declan. GBM. Look, Which multiple. Is? So, um, glioblastoma multiple. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next question. Which APOE allele confers increased risk of Alzheimer's disease? Declan. Four. Correct. That was speed. Yeah. Was that, it was either I two or four. I was, was going like, to guess four, four and I was like, oh. I was like, it's either two or four. I'm Apo, gonna, Apo, four I was yeah. just going to just gonna YOLO four and I'll, then if I'll, it was I'll two, like, wait, I got APOE. Yeah. Next question. Clozapine is most commonly used to treat what disorder? Psychosis. Correct. Mm. Next question. Clopidogrel. What are the four cardinal motor features of Parkinson's disease? 
Ooh. Bradykinesia. Mm -hmm. um, rigidity. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, muscle facies. Bradykinesia. Yep. Rigidity. Yep. Stooped posture. Yeah. Um, and, and I think I know the last one. Uh, shuffling gait. Uh, not the one I'm looking for. Okay. Um, uh, hey, hang on. Back, I'm answering. So, <laughs> bradykinesia, rigidity. Yeah. Um, spasticity. No. Okay. And Ooh. tremor. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That was it. That was we what I was. Tremor, no, that was we forgot tremor. That was our tremor. We forgot tremor. tremor. Okay. <laughs> so Next question. What is the most common cause of a spontaneous, non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage? Spontaneous non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage is a uh, berry aneurysm rupture. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Damn, I knew that as well. And then you buzzed <laughs> in and then we're taking ages. I was like, yeah. damn. Next question. Carbamazepine can be used in the management of epilepsy. What is the mechanism of action? Of this it's a sodium channel blocker. Yeah. Correct. Damn it. Dude. Louis bodies are produced by deposition of what misfolded protein? Ah. Alex. Cow. Oh no, it's not. Oh. Evelyn. Incorrect. Alpha sign nuclear. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I, so I, I rushed. Another, I rushed. I rushed. So I rushed when it. you said that, I was like, it's alpha sign nuclear. And yeah. then when you guys did it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, no, I, I, I threw it. Throws, no, it throws me off when you do it so confidently. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh. Last question of Neo. A 45 year old female presents with paresthesia and an ascending flaccid paralysis. She mentioned she was previously unwell after a bout of Campylobacter enteritis. What is the most likely diagnosis? Guillain Barre syndrome. Correct. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> In celiac disease, what component of gluten triggers an immune response? <laughs> Is it yes. gliadin? Correct! Yeah. <laughs> gliadin. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't get it I out. I couldn't get it out. I couldn't I get it out. I thinking galactose. Where is secretin produced? Alex. Pancreatic ductal cells? Mm. Oh no, oh that's... Oh, um... In like the duodenum? Correct. Yeah. Okay, next question. What are the fat soluble vitamins? ADEC. A D E K. Paracetamol toxicity results yeah. from buildup of which toxic byproduct? <sighs> Is it NABQ yes. or something like that? Yeah. Correct. Yes! It was like so <laughs> it was something we it was something we it was like it was like yeah. NAPQ. -y. A 60-year-old male presents with widespread metastatic HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma. Which tumor marker will most likely be elevated? CEA. Mm. Oh. Have a guess, man. That's carcinoma embryonic. Yeah, 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 that's something else. Carcinogenic yeah. embryonic cancer. That's for colorectal cancer, I think. Yeah. 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 P2. Mm. Incorrect. I don't know what that is. <laughs> that P10. <laughs> So the answer is alpha feta protein. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, alpha dude. Protein. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh. All right, next question. In the hepatitis B serology report, what is the presence of antibodies against hepatitis B service antigen indicate? Um, either a previous infection or a vaccination. Correct. Yeah, nice. Nice. Well, technically, previous resolved in. Well, yeah. 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 In a liver function test, Ooh. does an elevated ALT suggest a hepatocellular or biliary pattern? Hepatocellular. Yeah. Biliary. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, um, if you got it wrong, I was just going to look that up on the train on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> actually? Actually. I was like, oh, LFTs, they're like pretty important. Yeah. Peptic ulcers. <laughs> No, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. I was trying to get Bruce. Peptic ulcers yeah, yeah. resulting from H. pylori infection are typically treated by triple therapy. What does this consist of? PPI, yeah. amoxicillin. Yeah. And, um, hang on. Oh, those are the two I need. Clarithromycin? Chris! Oh. <laughs> Damn! That was, that was good, good You got it. Shoot, that's a rock. <laughs> Hemophilia type A results from deficiency of which side? Oh, eight. Correct. I should have buzzed in and knew that was going to be the question. Because <laughs> as soon as you said which, I'm like, it's going to be eight, nine, or eleven. It's eight for Declan, A, you've, nine you've for let, B. Declan, you've let me down here. The Philadelphia chromosome results from translocation. BCR able 922. Correct. 
Philadelphia chromosome, yeah. the city of love. Brotherly love. City of brotherly love. Philia. Thank you to our old professor. Delphos. If he's watching this video, he would know yeah. each of us. <laughs> oh, you bet he no. would. Reed Sternberg cells are a characteristic pathological finding in which disease. <laughs> Alex. How? Reed Sternberg cells? Reed Sternberg okay. cells. I think I got it. Um, I can't remember. Colorectal cancer. No. Incorrect. Non Hodgkin's lymphoma? Incorrect. Oh, right, sorry, Seb. Hodgkin's lymphoma. Correct! <laughs> oh, God. Okay. What is the primary chemotherapeutic agent used in HER2 positive breast cancer? Perceptin. No. Wait. Oh, dude, no, I don't know. 5 FU? Incorrect. No, Alex? Oh, Alex? Alex? Oh, I was going to tell you the answer. No, you can't give me the answer. Oh, okay. It's, it's Trastuzumab. 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 Oh, 5 FU is not a horrible guess. Yeah. The CRAB criteria is used in the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. What are the four factors that make up this criteria? Do we have to get all four? I reckon whoever get can get two the two out of four. I was going to say C is chronic, B is, yeah. is blastocytes. No, is, is A like anemia? It is. And B is back pain? Incorrect. Is it blastoma? No. No, that's just oh. what I said. Yeah. <laughs> is it B? Oh, that is what you said. No. Yeah. So the crab criteria is hypercalcemia, renal failure, or renal insufficiency, oh, nice. anemia, and bone disease. I thought anemia and bone disease, okay. Dude. That's fine. A patient receives a blood transfusion. He soon experiences fever, chills, rigor, dyspnea, and hypotension. What is the most likely diagnosis? <laughs> blood type mismatch. Right! Does he get a tie break in there? Are we tie breaking? Yeah. Do we want a tie break? Okay, are we tie breaking and doing the another round? Because he actually tie break. I wasn't expecting yeah. to tie break that. Dun 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 dun! Tiebreaker! Alright, guys, so we are going into the tiebreaker between Declan and Alex. Deborah has seven questions prepared and it's the first of four points. Good luck. What is the gold standard pharmaceutical treatment of Parkinson's disease? <laughs> L-Dopa. Correct. Yeah. Wee. Mm. What about, what about R-Dopa? I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. Next question. What does rituximab bind? <laughs> Alex. Uh, um, CD20. Yeah. Correct. Oh, no. I'm just not buzzing here. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, 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 don't. It'll, it'll get it. It'll get it. It'll get it. It'll okay, it'll next question. Yeah. Does pancreatic cancer typically produce painful or painless? <laughs> painless, strongest. Correct. Oh my god! Dude, what is that? I, I hear the answer. I'm just not buzzing here. He just baited you, dude. I'm just waiting. He, he literally hustled you. Yeah. He hustled you. I'm just waiting for the question to finish. Next question. Which virus is the most common cause of epidemic gastroenteritis? I don't know this one. Cytomegalovirus? No, 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 it's not, it's not. Oh, it's okay. not, it's not. I, 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 I don't know, I don't know this answer. It's norovirus. Okay, that was correct. Yeah, it's okay. norovirus. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I would have said, I would have said RSV. I, I, I was just switch on. I was talking about CMV for something. Next question. Which type of arrhythmia increases risk of ischemic stroke? AF. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Ischemic stroke? Yeah, ischemic stroke. I never, I never count AF as an arrhythmia. Yeah, neither did I. In my mind, it's like a separate. Like, the, I just heard the word stroke and it's like AF. Yeah. Okay, yeah. next question. Which hormone inhibits release of GnRH? Oh. Alex. Oh, oh, oh I know. Wait, which I know. hormone? I know. Yeah. Oh, prolactin? Correct. Yeah, <laughs> next question. Is ejection fraction preserved in systolic or diastolic? <laughs> diastolic. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that as well. Um, Don't let the player hate the game. Oh, that's what I get for going to bed at 3 a.m. and getting up at 7. Uh, I'm not worthy of this thing. <laughs> Sign out. I'm taking it as a trophy. Alright, so that wraps up the end of the quiz. Unfortunately, Declan um, has lost Alex in the tiebreaker. I feel so bad. Hey, that's just a lesson. Don't go to bed at 3 a.m. the morning before you have an important quiz, yeah? <laughs> Alright, so really, there's no winners and losers in this game. There's only Declan, who needs to get an ice bucket poured on. Hi guys, I've got the ice. Put in the bucket, and we're gonna cool Declan off. Bro, 
Damn, dude. <laughs> right, right. John, John it's actually so cold. No, 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 no. He can't know. He, he can't be ready. He can't be ready for it. It's colder than that. Oh my god. Alright. Oh, dude. That's so cold. Let me know when you're gonna do it as well, yeah? No. Alright, guys, so it's that time. Declan's gonna give him a bit of a cool down. So, any final words, mate? <laughs> uh, yeah, make sure you study hard and uh, learn your med. Look, if you want to see Seb do some of these punishments, uh, smash that like button, tell us that you'd want a part four, and hopefully next time Alex and I will be able to beat him, so he'll be doing one of these. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Okay. Just don't drop it on the head. On three. Yeah. One, two, three. Alright guys, well that's going to wrap up the video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And until next time, this is Sebastian, Alex, Declan, stay sharp. You. <laughs> you guys should have smoked me! Wait, did I say lung on the floor? So if Alex yes. was GLP-1 and you were DPP-4 oh and I was the DPP-4 inhibitor, I stop you from working, yeah, which means you stop Alec working, which means Alex you, does more.